I wanted to create a video on clogged arteries, osteoporosis, and vitamin K2. You may have never heard of vitamin K2, but it's very different than vitamin K1. Vitamin K1 helps clot things, and even doctors, if they want to thin the blood to prevent clots, they'll give people a drug called Coumadin to thin the blood because it blocks vitamin K1. But vitamin K2 is very, 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 very different. Vitamin K2 works with vitamin D in calcium metabolism, all right? So let's just show you how this works. Vitamin D3 has a function absorbing calcium. So it actually, what it does is it allows the calcium to be absorbed by 25 times more than it normally would. So calcium doesn't just travel on its own. It needs help by other vitamins, okay? Vitamin D3 is, is the one that works in the intestine and helps you absorb the calcium from the intestine much greater than if you didn't have it. And what, calci what vitamin D does is it increases the amount of calcium in the, in the blood. Now, if you have too much vitamin D, you can end up with too much calcium in the blood. It's called hypercalcemia. Um, but the, the vitamin K2 is the other part of the transportation because without vitamin K2, you end up with placking, calcium placking in the arteries. You end up with all sorts of uh, extra junk in the joints. Calcium uh, on the teeth is tartar. In the soft, in, mainly in the soft tissues. So vitamin K2 helps deliver that gunk, that calcium gunk, and the calcium that's in the blood from the help of vitamin D3 into the bone so, and the teeth. So one of the purposes of vitamin K2 is to make sure you have very, very strong bones um, with strong calcium and other minerals and good teeth. But what's really cool is that vitamin K2 is the most potent inhibitor of vascular calcification. You ever notice when people get older, they get stiffer and they start hunching over like this and they become almost like a stone. That's because they're deficient in vitamin K2 because calcium just kind of randomly plugs everything up. Vitamin K2 also has been shown to improve elasticity in your arteries. Now think about what that may do to your blood pressure too. It may decrease the blood pressure because it's making your, your arteries more elastic. Um, there's even cardiologists now that have blogs out there recommending vitamin K2 for calcified aortic, uh, or, which is like the vessel in your heart, to help reverse that. Um, but you'll just have to do your research on that because it also helps clean out the joints and the teeth. teeth. The other effects is that it does have effects on the jaw bone and the maxillary bone and the teeth. So without K2, you end up having kind of a narrow jaw, uh, dental problems, you, a need of braces, cavities, things like that. Um, they did three clinical trials and they did find that um, they did not see any prevention of osteoporosis by taking calcium in females, which is interesting because I know people tell you to take your calcium to prevent osteoporosis, but that's absolutely not true because they, the three big studies failed to show any positive relationship between taking calcium and preventing osteoporosis. And that includes taking vitamin D. And we know why, because the person is deficient in vitamin K2. They also found that a side effect from taking this calcium is you start getting calcified arteries and heart problems, even heart attacks. So by taking calcium, it can create problems. But if you know about vitamin K2, then you understand why, because they didn't have the, the, the dump truck to deliver the calcium all the way over here. Now, I did list down below what I recommend is how much dosage to take vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, because in order to make vitamin K2 work, it needs vitamin D3. So they both work together. And in nature, we always look at things as an isolated event, but really it's a complex thing that occurs. So the big question is this, where do we get vitamin K2 from our foods? Well, you get it from the conversion of K1 to K2 because um, K1 is in all the leafy greens. It's in the grasses. So when the cow eats the grass, it then converts it to vitamin K2. And it's in grass, uh, it's in milk, cheese, butter from cows that have been fed grass, not grains. It's also in goose liver. 
So people don't eat that. They don't eat butter. It's also an egg yolks from chickens that have eaten some grass as well. So what are the two things that people or doctors tell you to avoid for clogged arteries? Cholesterol, eggs, butter, um, cheese, whole milk, yogurt. The exact things that have the K2 that would have prevented the problem in the first place. So, okay, so now it's another one of those everyone knows and they tell you to do this, right? But you can take it as a supplement, but you don't have to necessarily be afraid to consume butter from a grass-fed cow or even egg yolks, organic egg yolks, or even what I like to do is I like to have the European cheeses and because those cheeses are from cows that are uh, on a mountain um, uh, that have fed grass. They're not eating, feeding grains, mainly from Europe. That's pretty much what I do. And I consume a lot of cheese because I'm from Wisconsin, of course. But the point is that you can really help undo this and prevent osteoporosis if you get enough of the K2 and have the vitamin D3. And this is uh, actually fascinating because it actually helps you reverse some of the aging process with the elasticity of your soft tissue, the joints, and the arteries. Okay? So this is very exciting. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.